Hello from wherever you are, and welcome to Let's Play Games. I'm John McFarland, Adult Services Librarian for National Public Libraries, and I hope you'll join me in learning or rediscovering some of the more common and uncommon games out there. This time, I want to venture into walking down the links, an outdoor stroll, the game of golf. In most card games, we typically like going for either shedding of cards, but we don't think of them as points, or scoring points to hit a high number. This time, we're going low. Let's go below par and get stuck in. Now that we've gone over cards, shuffling, and the suits, we're going to go into the gameplay. Now, what I'm going to do is we've got two stacks here since I'm going to have four players for this one. So this is two decks all combined together. And everybody here is going to get six cards. And what we're going to do after that is we are going to make them into two rows of three. I'm going to put one card here. This will be our initial discard pile, and this will be our stock. So what I'm going to do, you're not going to look at your cards. No one is going to look at their cards. We're going to place it in two rows of three, like I said. It's got to be face down. Ooh, almost had a card flip up there, but alas, we did not. So this is one of those games where you can set it up fairly quickly. Since it's just me, it sometimes takes a second. So now what we're going to do is each player is going to turn over two cards of their choosing. So I'll do the corners here. I'll do those. I'll do... Mm, I should do that one. Oof, I don't like that one. And we'll do that. So this gives us a lot of information. Now what we want is the total of these six cards when we add them up to be the lowest amount. Now, here is the important thing about counting. For this, this is an ace low specific game. So an ace is only worth one. You'd like to have some aces. The good news is you also have the two, which is actually a minus two. So having a two is a good card to have in your pile. You don't know if you have one, you don't know if it's in the stock, but hey, it could come in handy. Three, all the way through 10 are their face amounts. So there's seven, eight, four, three, five, and seven. Those are just the face amounts. The jack and queen, no one has a jack and queen, those are worth 10. The kings are an interesting card. They're actually worth zero. So having these kings is not a bad card to have. Here's the fun twist. Notice here we have cards that are in a certain column and certain rows. What you want to do is you want to have, if you can, cards in the same column. If you do, instead of them counting for whatever number they count for, they count for zero. So see this seven right here? You'd kind of like that seven to be available to you. So the player to my left will be the one that goes first. And you've got a couple of options here. You can either pick from this discard, replacing it with one of your face down cards. You can pick from this stock and replace it with one of these face down cards. Or you can what's called knock and basically say that you're ending the game, ending the round, that sort of thing. So here's the fun catch to it. You don't know what these cards are. You get to look at it as you draw the card, but you do then have to remember kind of where you put stuff. So what we're gonna do is as you replace these cards, you're gonna put them eventually face up. The round will typically end when all of the cards have been placed faced up on one of the players. So this is almost a little bit of a race, but you can actually just have some cards face down. So what we're gonna do is they don't want this seven, so they're gonna take a card from the stock. It's a 10. So the 10 is a face card, they decide they don't want it. They're gonna discard that. 
play will move on. This is why it doesn't take just exactly six rounds. They're searching for cards that they want. They're searching for a low score. So the next player, a four. It's a pretty low card. Now they have to decide what they are going to switch over. And once you've put it there, you've put it there. So they're gonna put, they're kind of holding out here. That's already a zero. So I'd say that's a safe one. And that becomes a jack. So you've actually technically netted yourself a certain number of points. So what I'm gonna do is for the purposes of this, put it face up. So that way we all can remember what's been played. And what I'll actually do is I'm gonna tilt these cards a little bit. So that way you remember where we started a little bit. So now a jack's been discarded. They're not gonna take this jack. A three, hmm, not bad. I'll replace this one right here. And it actually doesn't work out for them because it's a two. So they technically have lost a point, whoopsies. Uh, they've actually lost a couple points because that two is now worth a minus two. Hmm. They definitely are gonna wanna pick up that two. It's a question of where do you place something? Let's see. Eight is potentially worth it. Trying to draw a pair if you can. So this is where kind of that strategy element comes into play. Because remember, it has to be a pair along the column. Uh, seeing the seven visible and the seven of the discard, I think they'll do this one. It actually works out evenly. Whoops. But hey, that means that we're dealing with, I'll do that. That's a three. And this is now where some of the discard rules come into play because the three is faced, but hey, that's a pair and gets rid of an eight. Can't do anything with this, so they're gonna draw from the stock. They got a five. So that becomes zero and it was actually a five already, so they would have been fine. This is part of the mystery and the random chance of the game, I will absolutely concede. They'll draw. They draw a two. So hey, a minus, that's not bad. They'll get rid of that one. Good draw, Jack, not bad. Uh, they don't have anything here, so they'll draw a nine. They don't like that. This player, a four. That would have been helpful earlier, but hey, only so much you can do. So they'll put it right there. That's a nine. This person's got a pretty low score over here. Uh, they'll do that. Gets rid of an eight, which actually helps out this player. Oh, look, we're back to a jack. They're gonna draw six. Doesn't do anything. So they'll do that. They're gonna hope for a better number. Four definitely doesn't help. Uh, six. Now here's where you talk about the random chance. You don't know what card is under there. It could be a two, could be an ace. Do you want to try and go for a pair, but that's a guaranteed six right there. Let's just go ahead and say they decide to move on. This person definitely doesn't want a 10. That's not what they want. I think this drawing a seven, just for the sake of ending a round, saved themselves one point. Not bad. So let's get a pad here. And let's count up the scores, shall we? And here, the lowest card total. So one, two, three, four. Now in some versions of this, you do give people a chance to um, go all the way around once if they so choose. But for here, we're just gonna pause it right here so that way we can tabulate. So pair in the column, that's zero. Uh, seven and seven, that's 14. And as I said, the twos were minus twos. So that's 14 minus two, which is 12. And another minus two, which is 10. Not bad. So let's see what these cards were. An ace, not bad, and a nine, ooh. So as I said, that's a one. That is a zero. 
that, six and four is 10, minus two, eight, plus nine, 17. Not a bad score, all things considered. All right, ooh, definitely not bad. So these threes cancel out, that's a zero, king, zero. Ace is worth one, and then these two fours makes nine. So even though this player, player one, was first to go out, player three manages to have, with luck, a lower score. And let's just go ahead for Sandy's sake. That's a zero. They cancel out. That's five and seven, which is 12. Plus four is 16. Plus three is 19. So for the first, and yes, they're called holes, you have the low score of 10, but nine is the winner of that round. And what you're doing is that the full game is nine or 18 holes if you're in for a longer game and the most number of holes wins. Typically I've seen as a tiebreaker, the lowest score overall through nine holes. Uh, so some people do it different ways for how they play golf or how they would score a game. So from here, you would just continue on playing. You would collect everything. You'd shuffle up again. And this, in a nutshell, is golf. Now, we've gone over the basic game. Let's add some layers and some complexity onto it, shall we? One sec. Let's add a little bit of layers to this and you decide, let's play a little bit more. This is nine card golf. Same rule set starting off. So as long as you feel comfortable with six card, nine card adds in a couple layers. You need all three cards in a row in order to get zero. So it's a little harder. The good news is that horizontal and diagonal can also count. So you at least have more options than you did before. I also added in the four jokers from these two respective decks. This is one of the first games on the entire series that we've talked about jokers with any sort of length. But from here, a joker is worth minus four points rather than minus two, which is probably gonna come into play because the scores are probably gonna be a teensy bit higher. Also, there is a way to get minus 25 points but it's a little harder. You need a two by two block, so one, two, three, four, or one, two, three, four, to all be the same card, and it's minus 25 points. Obviously, quite the incentive. However, a little more complex to do. So, same principle applies. We're gonna start here. They don't want the jack. They definitely don't want a queen. Play moves on. They also don't want a queen. This person doesn't want a nine again. You're looking for low numbers or obviously low. 10, okay, seven. So now here's the question. Do you want seven down here? Do you want seven down here? I think they'll do seven here. It opens up a little bit of options here, but at the expense of a two, to which person say, uh, thank you very much. To right there. Realistically, twos only help so much here. Threes. Now you can get rid of the face card that's upright if you want. Kind of want to do that just so I know that I've really reduced what I've been doing. So drawing again draws a two naturally. Um, they can't get the minus 25 that they would like. So I think they'll mm, hate that. Let's see, they'll replace this ace. What do they want to do? They'll take this three here. That'll be a five. Now, one thing that a player can do in nine card golf, 
especially when you get these high numbers, is you are allowed, as your turn, instead of drawing, to flip over a card of your choice. However, now you gotta deal with that. So they say, mm, I'm gonna flip this over. They know that they've got a 10 to deal with, but it does mean that the five moves to another player. Let's see, I think they'll take the five. Let's see what they got. Ah, exchange for a queen, love it. They'll draw here, that's a four. I think they wanna try and go for that seven combination still. Hey, okay. lesser four points. Now, draw here, five. What do they wanna do? I think they'll go for this corner. Oh, hate that, three. I think they'll exchange. Ha! Like I said, luck of draw, this is what happens sometimes. So, Definitely gonna want to take that three. It's just a matter of where. I'll take this corner. Ah, drop the ace. Hate that. Do they want to knock out? They've seen sevens. Hmm. I think maybe they'll give it a whirl. See what they can get. Jack. They definitely don't want that. So they'll draw. Hey, a five. Oh, but that gets rid of a four. I think, get rid of that, that's a six. Hmm. I think I'll take the six and it exchanges for a six. Oh, let's see. Do they wanna go for mystery card? I think mystery card. Ah, that drops two, that's not bad. Eight. Hey, draws an ace, so what do they want to do here? I think they'll do that, which is a seven. This person will take the seven, see, loses the seven. Oh, that's another one you, you hate for that to happen. And that's happened to them twice now. They're gonna get rid of this nine. I'm not taking a 10, that's for sure. A four, I think they'll take that. That gets rid of a five. Yeah, I'll get rid of this 10 here, which is not bad. It's kind of equivalent exchange a little bit. You draw a two naturally and lose a two. I think this person's in desperate need of a two. Do they want to take that last card? They've got a pretty low score and I think they probably feel pretty confident. They're not getting the bonuses that they probably thought they would. Ah, they lose a king, but that's not bad. So from there, Notice how that still was a pretty quick pace for even nine cards. This is the intent for it to be a faster pace game. So let's start with player one. I'm gonna flip these remainder cards. So as a reminder, kings are worth zero. The twos are worth minus two. So let's kind of put those off to the side for the second. Let's find easy numbers to add up. So that's Four and six, that's 10. There was nothing in any of the rows. So that's 15. That's nine, so that's 24. 27 minus four, 23. That's a pretty respectable score, all things considered. Let's flip over this last card. I think they were hopeful. No adding up, hate to say it. Haven't even seen a joker yet, actually. So let's do, that's zero, that's a minus two. So like I said before, let's find some stuff that adds up together. So this is gonna be six, seven, eight. That's gonna be 18. 18 plus 14 is 32 minus two, so that'll be 30. That's not a bad score. Now over here, nothing added up, so that's 10 right there. That's four, three. The three twos are really gonna help this player along. So that's gonna be 10, it's gonna be 11, it's gonna be 14. It's gonna be 18, that's gonna be 22 minus 
two, four, six. Not bad. So that'll be a total of 16. Doing pretty well over here for player number three. Uh, let's flip these up and see. Oh, not particularly helpful. So there's gonna be a high score going on over here. Let's see, let's get these more organized. So that's seven and three, 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 54. So, like I said, depending on the way that you play it, you can either do it on an individual round basis, of which player three would be doing pretty well for themselves. Player four is not liking that as much. I think they would much rather be at zero rather than this in total adding up. But this is a pretty frequent occurrence where you have the ability to try and build a hand as quickly as possible and try and consider how fast other people are building their hands and what scores are you willing to take? Because remember, if people are discarding jacks, queens, and kings, and you can make that two by two row, you can actually kind of strategize and leave some space for it, as you noticed I was trying to do over here. Leave some space for the right cards to cancel everything out numbers wise. So not as successful that round, but I want to show you one more version of this. And I'm gonna do it in the nine by nine way but what I'm gonna do is this is a Spanish version of the game called Cambio. And there are extra fun powers involved. More on that in a sec. So, same setup as last. I wanna throw some twists into this because what's a card game without fun variants? This version of the game has some, what I'm gonna call, powers. You can actually trade points for little observations into the game that add another little layer onto it. So first off, the jack has its own power now, and it's only when you draw it and discard it. As you discard it, you get this ability. So for the jack, you get to look at one card that is face down. You don't reveal it. You just get to look at it. For the queen, you get to look at an opponent's card, but they don't get to see it. it. Can be helpful for information, especially if you're trying to see what's potentially left. The king, swapping a card with the opponent, which, ooh, you're trading off that zero for, let's say you're trying to create that two by two block. You got options here. And the last, the Joker. You get to change the positions of cards with the Joker. So you're sacrificing that minus four, and someone can pick that up. But if you need to rearrange your cards a little bit, that can be helpful, especially if you're trying to create that diagonal row that I referred to. As we usually do, we're gonna start with the player to our left. They have this discarded queen. Hmm. I think I want to go for it. I think I want to try and go for this cancellation. And they actually get rid of a king. Now here's the thing. You can only do it from drawing from the stock so they don't get that uh, swap card with the opponent that I referred to. But this person can now pick up a king, which is still worth zero, by the way. I think they're going to do that. And trade it for a two. I think this person's going to very much be willing to trade for that minus two that 10, which isn't very helpful. So I'm gonna draw, and I'm going to replace here. That's a jack. Again, discard does not factor in. They're not gonna want a jack, since they didn't draw it. This player doesn't want a 10. This player drew a jack, so they get to look at one of their cards. So let's say they wanna look at the center card, which they see is a four. This is helpful for them in knowing what to discard or what to get rid of, especially if you know that's another face card. Play then moves onward. Another two. Hey, I think they'll take that center. Go for the diagonal. Queen. They're not going to take it. Five. 
I'll replace, gets rid of a 10, not bad. So notice how this still is a fairly fast paced game. All right, getting rid of the queen. They're not gonna wanna take that. They're definitely gonna take this ace and they know this card they wanna get rid of is a four. Not very helpful to them, so they're willing to go for it. This person's gonna pick up a four. They're gonna discard a king, actually. Hmm. I would say take the king here, especially since it's worth zero. And that nets you 10 points, that's not bad. So drawing three. Let's go for this corner. Actually gets rid of the joker by accident. Oh, you hate that. So this person's definitely gonna pick up that joker since that's minus four. Gets rid of a five. Hmm. They'll do that. They're already, ah, got rid of a four. Four is only so helpful here, but I think they'll take that. Gets rid of a five, which this person will gladly take and gets that row of zero that I had mentioned before. Gets rid of an eight, no help. Draws a four. I think they'll do this one right here. Gets rid of a three, ouch. This person will take the three rid of an eight. I've only got two cards left. This person drew a four. I think they'll do this. Ah, got rid of the joker again, but that's sort of like a bank error in this person's favor. They're gonna take this, get rid of the jack. Player gets a four, loses a 10, not bad. Draws a six. They'll get rid of here. That still nets in their favor. Mm, seven, and actually gets rid of a seven. Let's see. They're really hoping for a queen here. They draw a jack, but they discard it, and they get to see what is here. Okay. I'm not going to show you for funsies. This person will draw an eight. Now they're really having to think about it. They've got a fairly low score. Um, now they they don't think that person's gonna pick it up. Seven, I think they can kind of afford to wait. See if they get another lucky card. That's not a terrible number. Um, oh, wait, they're absolutely gonna take that seven. And that's actually more an error of not looking at what is going on down the road. So this is where play stops. They get that seven. They were really hoping for another four they could have picked up, but they didn't get an opportunity. So let's go ahead and do our scoring. Didn't get a chance to look at a lot of cards, but that is where the powers come into help. So let's take a look at what we got here. So that ended up being a zero. That's a zero. That's a 10. That would be 12. So 15 and 12, 27, which is not too bad of a score. Player two, let's go ahead and flip and see what they've got. They had that nine that they looked at. So, all right, 20, this row cancels out. So zero, this would be minus six. So 20, 12, 32, minus six. 26. All right. Let's see what we have here. Not great, not terrible. Uh, so that's a zero. That's a 10. That's a 20. That's 25. And eight, which is 33, minus four, 29. So they actually will not win this round on its own individually. But it's still a fairly low score, all things considered. No one has a super low score that allows them to catch up. So some of these rounds, you can kind of afford it. So now let's take a look. Let's take the twos out of play as well as the king. Let's kind of find some stuff in common. That's going to be 10 right there. That's gonna be 11 and eight. So 21 and eight, 29 minus 
four is 25. So player four actually manages to win a round. You like to see it. So let's kind of consider from where we're at. We're through three holes at this point. So we've got zero, that's 60. So through three holes, 60, three, carry the one, two, four, 73, nine, and 16. That's 25, 54. So even though it was a fairly even round, player four did win a round. So they would have loved a lower score, but this is where the game can sometimes take a new life of its own, especially if you're chasing a certain score and have to take more risks. Because even though they won the round, they only caught up four points and they're still hurting from that round 254. So at the moment, player three's in the lead with 54, player one's not far behind. Player two's a little further back, but pretty close, and player four is gonna be playing catch up for a while, hoping for another player to have a big hand. This is three different, more increasingly complex ways to play the game of golf. That's all the time we have for today. Thanks for tuning in. Join me next time as we go into yet another Carter board game, and I teach you about the history, teach you about the lore, and teach you how to play. I'll see you next time. Thank you.